As some of you may or may not know, I've tipped the Sydney Roosters to finish inside the top four. I think they've got arguably the best roster on paper, one of the best coaches in the NRL, and the Sydney Roosters have just been an all-around great and dominant club for the better part of the past two decades. However, there is one question that has to be raised about what I just said, and that is that it's the fourth year in a row we've all believed in this. For the past four years, really ever since 2020 when they were going for the three-peat, we all thought that on paper the Sydney Roosters had the talent to win the Premiership. But ever since 2019, they have never finished in the top four. They have always started slow and some of their best players are starting to slow down and make way for some young heart throbbers, which is creating a really weird dynamic between the best players and some of these young hot throbbers who are coming through. But ladies and gentlemen, as always, smash that like button if you enjoy the video. Let me know down below, do you think we should be concerned about the Sydney Roosters and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already? Because this is something I've been thinking for the better part of this off season. Because I said the same thing last year and I said the same thing the year before. I predicted that in both 2022 and 2022, that the Sydney Roosters would lose to the Penrith Panthers in the grand final. Well, I'm happy I got the Penrith part right. I couldn't be more wrong about the Sydney Roosters because literally you could recycle the script from 2022 to 2023. Now, 2021 and 2020 were a little different. Obviously, in 2020, they were going for the 3 P, and while Penrith did just do it, I think a lot of people thought it just couldn't be done, and they fell off a cliff at the end of that season. They lost Cooper Cronk, and then in 2021, we thought this team was going to be back. They were still without Cooper Cronk, but Luke Keery became the halfback, and they still had a gun team on paper. Obviously, Luke Keery would go on to, unfortunately, tear his ACL, missing the majority of 2021, and then it was just injury after injury after injury for the Sydney Roosters. An incredible effort. Trent Robinson got this team team that was really the weakest Roosters team we had seen since about 2016. They came fifth. They got smashed by Manly in the second week of the finals, but they went further than they had any right to go. Led by a halves pairing of Drew Hutchinson, who this was his really first big stamp in first grade. No one really knew anything much of him until that point, the casual NRL fan. And then Sam Walker. Reese Walsh didn't even win Rookie of the Year because of how good this halfback is. And with those experiences in 2020 and 2021, after Sam Walker proved that he was going to be an elite half, Luke Keery coming back in 2022, we all expected that this Sydney Roosters team would get back to its best. And well, 2022 was an absolute disaster. It started really slow for them. They were out of the eight, and then they had a massive win streak at the end of the year going into finals. So much so that there were a lot of people smoky to actually make the grand final. They played the South Sydney in week one, and then, I guess, everybody and their dog got Sinbin. Sinbin Sunday happened. They lost the South Sydney Rabbitohs in the finals, and then going into 2023, the Roosters knew they had to finish in the top four because as good as they were, and while a lot of people said that they were the biggest threat to Penn within that 2022 final series. Anything can happen in any rugby league match, which is no more shown than in Sin Bin Sunday, in one of the craziest games of footy, a game that will be lived on in NRL history. So going into 2023, Trent Robinson and the Roosters knew exactly what they had to do. And guess what? They did the same thing again, except this time they started slower and then ended an even more impressive win streak to make it to the finals. And they did actually win a finals game, beating the Cronulla Sharks in an absolute thriller. But now we're going into 2024 and it feels like Groundhog Day. It feels like 2022 and 2023 again. But why this year I'm more concerned than ever, despite having them in the top four, is that I know it's just a trial match, but this close to best 17 Sydney Roosters side couldn't even beat Manly's New South Wales Cup team. Dare I say, Manly's half of their New South Wales Cup team. I know it was a pretty decent performance by Manly, but the Sydney Roosters should have put the Sea Eagles to the sword. And even if they didn't, I just wanted to see some connection between that spine. They didn't have Brandon Smith there, but I cannot believe that going into their third season together, going into their fourth season on the same roster, that Sam Walker, Luke Keery, and to a stretch, James Tedesco are still not on the same page. I thought Tedesco 
Tedesco was great in the trial match. Probably the Sydney Roosters best outside Billy Smith. Between Victor Radley, Luke Keary, Sam Walker, James Tedesco, and from what we saw with Brandon Smith last year, I cannot believe that the Sydney Roosters are still trying to find a way to make this spine work. And I'm not blaming anyone. Obviously, it's incredibly harder than we all think, but I just have a question of whether or not Trent Robinson isn't allowing Sam Walker to be the halfback. And he is the halfback. He's got the number seven jersey on his back. And what I mean by that is that this should be Sam Walker's team by now. He was part of the reason his comeback in 2023 that the Roosters had any chance of making the finals and he played brilliantly. And I thought that was the best the halves had looked for the Sydney Roosters without still looking great. Sam Walker had some great individual moments and I thought he definitely outplayed Luke Keary in that trial match. Keary did have some great moments, but I cannot believe that Sam Walker seems to not be the guy in this team yet. The Sydney Roosters, when they won their premierships in 2018-2019, Luke Keary played a backup role to Cooper Cronk. And he sort of had to change that role in the 2018 grand final, but it just felt like Luke Keary and Cooper Cronk just sort of switched roles. For the most part, the Sydney Roosters have been great when they've had a dominant half in their team. I know Pierce Maloney in 2013 wasn't as strong as Cronk Keary in 2018 and 2019, but I cannot believe that it seems Trent Robinson Robinson is so hesitant to give their keys to Sam Walker. Sam Walker is better at his age than Nathan Cleary was. And I know that's not really a comparison, but we say it about Cleary when we compare him to the greats. And I think it's equivalent. Sam Walker, as an 18, 19 year old halfback, produced one of the best rookie years in recent memory, coming from the most important position on the field, beating the likes of Reese Walsh. And Reese Walsh has gone on to play a great supporting role at the Brisbane Broncos and is easily the biggest superstar of our game at the moment. But Sam Walker doesn't need to play a supporting role. I think you could make the argument that 2021 is still his best season because all Joe Hutchinson had to do was control his corridor and have a good kicking game. And I think Luke Keary, that's all he needs to do. Luke keary has been at his best alongside Reynolds and alongside Cronk when he's been playing down his corridor. And I think that if Keary can just also take control of the kicking when he's also got Manu and Suli and other guys to help him out in that regard, that when it comes to their attack structure that I think that Sam Walker needs to be the guy. Now that could not just be Luke Keary's fault. James Tedesco is one of the most involved fullbacks in the competition, but the Sydney Roosters have so much strike that I think just like in New South Wales, maybe Teddy has to pull it back just a little bit because he's got Daniel Tupo, Joseph Suli, Joey Manu, Dominic Young, and I know Young's out for round one, but the fact one of those guys isn't going to be in this starting back line is absolutely ridiculous. So I think James Tedesco can settle down just a little bit and let Sam Walker be the guy. T doesn't need to take fourth and fifth tackle hit-ups and, for lack of a better word, get in the way. Because James Tedesco will never get in the way. I think a lot of people are hating on him for having one decent year rather than the Teddy we all know and love. And it was a year where there were some terrific fullbacks who outplayed him. But James Tedesco, in my opinion, is still an elite fullback. And I know you want T to be involved as much as possible but Trent Robinson needs to find a way to make Sam Walker the key voice in that team because there's so many dominant leaders in the spine alone you got Brandon Smith who is one of the best running number nines in the competition you got Victor Radley who is one of the best ball playing locks in the competition you got Luke Keary who needs the ball you got James Tedesco who needs the ball Joey Marnie wants to be a roaming center Joseph Suli'i when he's playing wants to be a roaming outside back you've got gun back rowers everywhere but between Sua Wong, Angus Cry, and the Butcher Brothers, Stili Tupanua. There is just so much strike in this team. And if you put any other halves pairing from the top eight, top four teams in the Sydney Roosters side, I genuinely think that they would have won one, two, maybe even three premierships by now. But Luke Keary and Sam Walker, for as good of players as they are individually, have been letting this team down in that respect for the past few years. And they've both had some terrific performances and they've still been playing fine football, but at the end of the day, unless you're winning a premiership, no one cares where you finish. As long as you make finals footy, then no one cares. So they may as well be the Canberra Raiders. The Canberra Raiders have had just as much success in the season and finals as the Sydney Roosters in the past two years. And that is absolutely criminal to say because we all sit here and talk about how every year the Sydney Roosters have a team on paper that is as good, if not better than the Penrith Panthers. And every year we get to about mid-season, write them off. They have this incredible winning streak. We all start talking about how impressive they are and they get bounced in week one or week two of the finals. And we all say, you know what? Fair enough because they had a slow start. 
start. The Sydney Roosters, if they have a slow start again, I'm only going to hold it against them. This is a team who is great on paper, and this is Trent Robinson's biggest chance, because in 2013, he had a gun sign. And as a rookie coach to win a premiership, is outstanding. In 2018 and 2019, he also had a gun side, and now he has arguably the best team on paper in this competition. And I think Trent Robinson, if he's going to prove why his name should be up there with Bellamy, Bennett, even Ivan Cleary, he has to do something special with this team. If it was up to me, I'd be making Sam Walker the king. I don't know whether the Roosters just have many, too many cooks in the kitchen, too much strike, too many players that need to share the footy. If I'm the Roosters, I'm going back to as simple a game plan as possible. And for me, that includes giving Sam Walker the keys, making him the legitimate number one playmaker, and having James Zesco, Luke Keery, Victor Radley all playing supporting roles and helping him now. The same way Penrith do, the same way even Manly do to a degree with DCE. I think that if the Roosters can just become a little bit less, for lack of a better word, selfish between their star players and just go to a simple game plan, then I think that their players are good enough to absolutely dominate this competition. That is why for the fourth year in a row, I've got them at least making a prelim final. But ladies and gentlemen, let me know in that comment section. Should we be concerned about the Sydney Roosters? Are the Sydney Roosters destined to fail? Let me know in the comments. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Smash that like button if you enjoyed my little cheeky rant on the red, white, and blue from Bondi. And I'll see you in the next one.